Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome back to our Road to Glory career mode. I hope you are all doing well. A couple of things before we get started today. Firstly, a thank you for all of the support recently. I set you guys a like target of 200 on the last video and you guys smashed it. So here's the extra episode for you today. And the second thing is in regards to our goalkeeping situation. Now, obviously Joe Hart is still our number one goalkeeper. And I did see a couple of comments uh, saying we maybe should check out these players, um, a couple of young goalkeeping uh, options. But at the same time, we are training Lance Moore. So I feel like bringing in a goalkeeper who's already young, who needs training, there's no real reason for us to do that because we've got Lance Moore here already being trained. And the idea is, is that he will be our number one from next season. We just needed a keeper for now to step into the uh, shoes and get the job done for this first season. But actually... The way Joe Hart played last video, I think he'll do a good enough job for us. So I do appreciate the comments, as always. Um, and yeah, that's that's the reason why I won't be looking to bring in any young goalkeepers for now. That That's the thing, right? With Lance Moore being trained up, we don't need them for now. I also went through and looked at our youth academy. I got rid of quite a few players who I don't think are going to be good enough. And also promoted quite a few that I did want to see how they will get on in the future. And the rest of these players in here, I'm still undecided on. So, uh, yeah, these could make their way into the first team in terms of, you know, training with us. And equally, they could be released. I did promote a couple, so I'll show you those now. We've got a goalkeeper. Um, goes by... Or is, have we got a goalkeeper? We did, I think. No. Oh, yeah, there he is. Griffiths. Six foot five, 16 years of age. Potential of 92 to 94 on this guy. So, again, another one we could well train up. We've got more uh, different... More to the one that's our goalkeeper. Five foot seven, Cam, 63 rated. And this guy, King, three star, three star, 18-year-old uh, attacking midfielder as well. So we'll see how those guys get on. But without further ado, let's jump ourselves into the first game of the day. And as you find us, we're in 15th place in the Premier League. So we could do with our first win of the season, please. Although, it is against Spurs. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. Spurs captain by Harry Kane. Surprised to see Ericsson still at the club as well. It is a full-strength Spurs 11. It's a team that will give us a tough test here. We were able to rescue a point against Arsenal in the last video with El Ghazi scoring that goal late on. How will we fare against their North London rivals? Martinelli on the bench for us today. El Ghazi here makes that run in behind. He was so good. Last time out, ref. Is that not a penalty? Well, there's contact. And if El Ghazi goes to ground, it's a decision to be made. But... He stays on his feet. The ball trickles out of play. Maybe there isn't enough contact for it to be given as a penalty. Godfrey towards Lakerda. We are approaching half time. Lakerda's ball through. We'll find Solano. And he strikes first in the game. The man who has been our best player since we've come up to the Premier League has scored the opening goal. And you can't really dispute it. The numbers he's put up so far five goals for us in the opening part of this season. He has been our most important player, Christian Solano. And he scores the opening goal here at the New Lawn. And Spurs are respecting us. They know we can score. But that is not an area where we've struggled this season. It's been defensively. We've conceded quite a fair amount of goals. And you expect that if Spurs do create a chance, it's going to be... Well, I'd like to think we maybe can stop one or two chances. But yeah, we know that we probably will concede. But at half-time... We're going in the break at 1-0 in front, courtesy of Solano's goal. De La Vega into the feet of Lopez. Godfrey on his left and he goes to Ben Godfrey, who strikes one. And Castiles will keep it out. A second goal for us will give us all the confidence to see this win out and pick up our first three points of the season. And again, we're matching Spurs here like we did in that game against Arsenal. So maybe the 4-2-3-1 is the way to go from now on as El Ghazi takes this corner. In towards the near post. Rogani will head it away for Spurs. Son is their furthest man forward. But he's not really got support. Eric Dyer launches it. And we should be back in possession. Ref! I mean, Son's just taking him out there. And you've not even played advantage. That should be a yellow card all day, every day. Ben Godfrey. Solano. Solano. If he gets another shot here. He does, but it trickles through to Castiles. Who can collect it? 18 minutes to play. Young Min Son, left-hand side, goes back. Ericsson gets the header in. We can't quite get the ball away just yet. We need to remain focused here as that ball goes through. Oh, and it's Joe Hart with a massive save from Harry Kane. And that has kept us in front. 
there, I mean, he's done everything right, Harry Kane. He's got there ahead of Joe Hart, but he's done so well as our goalkeeper. And Dombele can't believe that it's not an equalising goal as he goes off. Spurs make a substitution. Eriksen corner, we've still got to defend it then. And he does swing it in towards the edge of the penalty area. Godfrey initially away, but not fully away just yet. And this is now testing times. This is where we've got to hold out and make sure we're still in the lead after this passage of play. Kane, Benjamin Pavard goes for the cross. El Ghazi will block it. And in fact, let's make a couple of changes ourselves as well. Solano leaves to a standing ovation. That ball through is good. And again, it's Joe Hart. Eric Dyer trying to creep it in at the near post. Can't quite find it. Solano's gone off. We've got Gelhard on. We've got Martinelli on. And we've got Gravenberch on as well. I made all three changes in that one uh, attempt there. As it's actually a goal kick. So we'll 100% take that. But, but I tell you what, Joe Hart, you're seeing it now. This is why I was confident in him after that last episode. And he's doing it again. Gravenberch, Martinelli, Gabriel Martinelli. Lovely footwork. He leaves the defender into dust. And Martinelli makes sure of the points here at the new lawn with an exceptional piece of skill. 2 0, and what a win this is going to be for us to pick up right here. Look at this, Martinelli, mate. That is quality. Their number six of Spurs, I'm not sure who it is, gets sold a dream. And Gabriel Martinelli against Spurs on loan from Arsenal, remember? It's Zagadou, the man who goes to try and stop him and gets turned. Has scored what will be hopefully the winning goal. I don't think there's enough time. Two minutes left here for Spurs to find something. And really, they had to find it when Joe Hart was making them saves. Because that, that was the moment they were going to get. And our goalkeeper stood firm. As time ticks away, we're going to our first win of the season. I didn't expect we'd get it against Spurs, I've got to admit. I thought maybe we'll be looking to get a draw here. But yeah, we are fighting for every single point available. Eriksen with a cross, near post, Jose Antonio away, only as far as Cavalio, whose volley had venom behind it, but not the accuracy, and it goes over and that's it, as Joe Hart will kick this ball away, it will finish the game, and it's going to be 2-0 the final score, there you have it, get in! Straight into our next game then, away at Vicarage Road against Watford, who have had a very good start to the season. Martinelli comes in. El Ghazi drops to the bench in our only change for this one. So don't change what's working pretty much is my thought process. And as Martinelli scored, I didn't feel like I could leave him out of the team. I even contemplated dropping maybe Lopez to the bench because he's got one goal and one assist to his name so far in the Premier League. But I just felt like maybe he needs like a little mini break. And uh, I thought maybe we'd bring Martinelli in for him. But no, we've dropped El Ghazi instead. But this Watford side... Could prove to be quite a uh, quite a decent side. To Ram already, to Penadara as they look for their first chance. We're just trying to do what we can to prevent the shot from coming in. Sissoko now working the space on the edge of the penalty area. Goes to Cyprian. Ball through. Penadara's in. And he squeezes it past our goalkeeper. And after five minutes, we're seeing it, what this Watford side is all about. Vicarage Road bouncing. And I had a sneaky feeling coming into this game. That we might be in for a bit of the fun pin. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping that we'll get straight back into this. But they've been very impressive in the early stages of Watford. And straight from kickoff, they mean business. Free kick Watford. It looks like it will be Cyprian to take it. It is. And Hart will keep it out as Lakerda just smashes it away into touch. We've got two minutes to go until half time. And we're not even really in this game. We've had to defend for pretty much 40 minutes of this. And there is half time. We're losing. And we need to find an answer because we're not really producing anything in the attacking sense. We've made our first change of the game with El Ghazi replacing Martinelli as Lopez will find Pedro de la Vega. And back post is El Ghazi. But de la Vega didn't see him. He went to Solano instead. And I actually think that El Ghazi had got the run on his man and was in front of him. He just needed the cross to find him. As we've given it away straight to Jared Bowen here. We've got 18 minutes to try and salvage something in a game where I don't feel like we deserve to. Because Watford have been the better side here. Last minute of the game. If we're going to do something, it needs to be now. As Gravenberch, fresh legs. He's running at this Watford back line. And Gravenberch looks to place one. But he didn't quite find it. And there it is then. It's a defeat from Vicarage Road. We may have just been on a high after beating Spurs. But we're brought right back down to earth. With this defeat here. And fair play Watford. They look like they're a good side this season. They look like a team who maybe could push. 
for European football. They're playing with all the confidence in the world. We have a cup game against Colchester. I set up my second team so that we can play them in the cups because we're not bothered about the uh, any of the cups this season. Uh, but as you can see, when I go to actually go into the sim, it's been in the game for a while, this bug, it doesn't actually use your second team. So I'm going to have to swap it all around using the main squad, which is a bit annoying. But um, yeah, I don't want to risk any top players. So I'll be back in a second once the team is ready. With it being away as well, I wouldn't be surprised if we lost the game, but it's a 3-0 win. Gelhard scoring twice and Mitchell with a goal as well. Injury to Strand, which doesn't really matter because he's like 58 rated anyway. So yeah, that's not important. Um, as bad as that sounds, but we're not going to miss him. Thanks for giving me the chance, says Ashley. He was literally brought in to just in case we have injury, but I guess he'll be useful in the cops. I don't know why El Ghazi's saying he's disappointed about not playing. Um, maybe I missed that. Maybe it wasn't against Colchester that he was disappointed in. But it's West Brom in our next game at home. And they are a point behind us in the table. Talk about a relegation six-pointer. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, especially given the, the fact that both of us have only won one game this season. So... If either one of us win this, we're leaving that team. And you can see the rest of the bottom of the league as it pans out. Fulham yet to pick up a point. Wolves on one. And that came against us. Leicester, what are they doing down there? Three points in the relegation zone. A win could climb us up as high as 11th place. The team that won the championship against the team that won the championship playoff final. Uh, Pedro de la Vega dropping to the bench for this one. El Ghazi and Martinelli starting out wide. But I actually think looking at the two teams... We have the stronger of the two sides through to Solano already. The angle's a little bit tight here, though, so looks to hold on to it. And now we'll get it away. Johnstone with the save. It's not really in a good place for Martinelli to head it to the empty net. So tries to pull it across, and Johnstone claims it. Lopez, Solano, El Ghazi with the run through. Solano finds him, and this is the first chance, really, since the opening chance that you saw for us to get a goal in the game. Because West Brom have been playing very high up the pitch and have kept us in our own half, but not there. That start that we made, you know, we had that first chance. Honestly, since that point, I've struggled to get out of our, of our own half. And it just felt like we have to hit them on the counter. And it did work out like that. El Ghazi bursting forward, smashes it into the far corner. We lead here by a goal to nil. Lopez with Solano making the move just in front of him. And he's picked him out brilliantly. And it's a top save by Sam Johnstone to deny Solano his sixth of the season. He did everything right, did our Colombian striker. Low, bottom corner. However, Johnstone made the save. And actually, West Brom have changed their tactics, which is playing into our hands a little bit more. They're stepping off now and allowing us a little bit more time on the ball to keep possession, which works better for us than what they were deploying before in trying to prevent us and, and close us down and play quite a high line. They've stopped doing that now. I think they're a little bit cautious about the counter-attack that we can do. The pace that we've got. West Brom might just get one last opportunity. The ball over the top towards Burke, who controls it. Now the cross into the middle. Tadebo needs to win that. And he has done. And that is it. It's a slender 1-0 victory. But we will take that. It's against the side who we might be fighting with. So it's points taken off them. It's points added to us. And that is a great result. Chelsea's last game, a 3-1 win over Manchester United. And they've got David Neres in their team, who scored five in his last three. Been on my channel before, Neres always seems to have a good game against me, whether it's my player career mode or just general career mode. Um, he, always, he always turns up. But I was actually looking at the Chelsea back line then. The back four, I think it's quite weak. And if you look at our attack, that's our strength. So, working that out, we might get a fair few chances here today. I'm actually feeling pretty good about this game. Although they did just win against Man United, I actually feel like this, this, we could be in for a little bit of a surprise here. And Naki Williams forced away, but he gets the cross in regardless towards Neres. As Hart will make sure. Is that going in? Oh, it's off the crossbar. Tielemans. That's outrageous. He nearly finds the back of the net from there. Naki Williams with the run from Neres. Left-hand side. He will find him. Dest. Needs to try and cut this out. And he can't quite do it. But Neres with the ball back in. Gets a second chance at it. Tielemans again. Having all of Chelsea's chances so far in this game. As Hart beats it away. And now up the other end then. As Des drives forward. He's looking for the ball into the middle. Towards Solano. Kepa keeps it out. Martinelli shouldn't have kept it in. And his, his pass goes straight to Kessia. Who finds Pulisic. This has been a fast start from both teams here. 
Half time here at Stamford Bridge. There's been chances for both teams, but somehow the scoreline remains nil nil. More to come of it in the second half, though, as Lopez has some space to work with here. Solano in front of him, and there is the ball through towards Solano then. He's up against your eye, and he's looking to fake shot it back towards. No, it doesn't go to Lopez, it goes to Martinelli, and he's made it count. Gabriel Martinelli has scored again against the London club. And he's about to go off as well. Pedro de la Vega being primed and ready to come on in his place. And Martinelli, what a way to go off. And look at the Forest Green fans inside the ground. They're buzzing. Solano, it's great work initially. But then the pass, I mean, Lopez does commit to the run and he gets a little bit in front of the ball. Martinelli, though, look at that. First time on the right foot. Pass Kepa. We said that there was more to come of what we saw in the first half. And I'm glad to say it's us who's got the goal. Solano, great control. And there it is. Another famous win for Forest Green at the hands of Chelsea. Gabriel Martinelli is the man to get the points for us. And our performances today have been sensational. We've not dominated the games, but... We're fighting so hard for these points, defending resiliently. And to say the very least, right, we've conceded one goal today. When you compare that to how many we conceded in our first three, that's a massive improvement. We can be proud of the way we played today. We haven't scored as many as I'd hoped, but our defence has been much, much better. So let's see where that puts us in the Premier League table before we go. So, results today see us climb into ninth place, just behind Manchester United on goal difference. Villa up into 7th, Watford 3rd place, 3 points behind Liverpool who lead the league uh, at the moment. Into the bottom half of the table then, and you can see 5 points is West Brom. So we now have a 7 point gap to them um, outside of the relegation zone. I'm very happy with that. 8 games already being played. As we end off the day though, a question I have for you. Who do you think was our player of the month for September? Um, we are into October now. I'm going to give you two options and there'll be a little poll at the top right hand side of this to vote on. Joe Hart is the first of those two players. He's had a very good start to his return to the Premier League. Three clean sheets in his first eight games, a seven match rating as well. Or do you think that it should be Christian Solano with five goals and three assists in his first eight Premier League appearances? They are your two options. Have your say top right hand side of this video for our player of the month for September. Um, but that does us for today. A massive thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, a huge, huge thank you for all of your support on the channel as well. Uh, the next episode for you will be dropping on Sunday because tomorrow we should have uh, the My Player Career Mode, I think, and maybe even Pez become a legend the rest of the first season of that. So I will see you back here again on Sunday for our third episode of season number four. Until then... Have a great day. Have a great evening. Stay safe, people. Catch you all soon. Adios.